So we're here with John from Google, who just won an award at Realcom for best use of AI in intelligent buildings. So tell us a little bit about what you did to get the award. Sure, sure. Thank you for uh, inviting me to talk. Uh, real, basically, there are two ideas, two concepts. One is optimal control, and the other one is intelligent diagnostics. So in optimal control, we believe what we can do with intelligent control of particular parts and set points in the building is to achieve at least a 5% or better uh, reduction in energy consumption and emission. Uh, we want to reduce our carbon footprint with the buildings we have without changing a lot of the infrastructure and be able to scale that across the fleet. So we are applying reinforcement learning, which is a type of machine learning that takes an action or takes in a state, generates an action, and gets a reward. And over time, the agent learns to optimize a policy to reduce carbon emission as well as energy consumption. The other thing that we're talking, that we're, we're pushing, is the idea of intelligent diagnostics. So let me explain that a little bit. And we developed this over time working with our technicians, our HVAC technicians at Google. So we thought we needed to detect devices that are broken, and that was it. But the technicians came back and said, oh, that's not enough information. We don't need just an alert. We need more explanation. So we said, okay, well, maybe we can get the symptoms. So we employ explainable AI for that, explainable AI techniques to extract from the model the features that are most important. And that turns out to be very much like symptoms, like a patient goes to a doctor and explains their symptoms. And the third one, the third piece is now that you've got the symptoms, you need an expert to explain and reason about the root cause of the problem. And so this is where we're actually applying Gemini to, with its ability to reason and generate causal explanations and generate root cause explanations to say, oh, well, if you look at the differential pressure here, and if you look at the supply air temperature here, you might have a broken valve. Rather than giving just those values, it actually goes and extracts root cause explanations as to what is potentially wrong with the device. So those are the two things that we're working on at Google, optimal control and intelligent diagnostics. So you're essentially using an AI to get the signals, so to speak, of, hey, what, what are the things that are causing this? And then you're using Gemini to then decipher that to kind of like, here's my expert opinion. And this is all based off of corpus of data that you're kind of collecting over time? Massive, massive quantities of data, yeah. unlabeled data. So yeah. the problem is, is we get so we collect so much data from so many devices, but it's, none of it's labeled. None of it is like, oh, this is good or this is bad. Right. So we have to make some changes to basic classification techniques. So we turn it into anomaly detection problem by using this idea of noise contrastive est estimation, and it's a it's a technique that's been around since about 2010, but never really employed with deep learning. So we did that. And as a byproduct of using a deep learning solution, we can uh, then apply a technique called integrated gradients, which provides us explainability in terms of what's wrong with this observation. And then those, that explanation is then extracted and we create a prompt and that goes gets ported on to Gemini and say, here's a bunch of symptoms. There's a bunch of problems here with this device. Can you kind of explain that to me and tell me what I need to do to fix it? And we found that that technique is working pretty well. Yeah. It sounds like you have to do a lot of data processing, a lot of things before you even send it to Gemini, which I think is lost. You know, they, they, uh, a lot of people when they first use, start using you know, Gemini or OpenAI, they're like, oh, I'll just send it this unstructured yeah. data and oh, why is it returning bad results? So how much work would you say goes into the actual data collection and labeling versus the implementation and the of like getting the the results back well what's very very important is that you're as descriptive as possible and provide a solid context for the type of device that you're trying to analyze so if you know it's an air conditioner you give a, an explanation about what kind of an air conditioner it is the specifics of the air conditioner and then you extract the the, the explainability um, three components of each explanation is the, the weight or the importance of a feature, the observed value, and the expected value. And you kind of start with the top most important ones and you work your way down the list until you choose, say, four to five or something like that. And then at the end, you give it a task. You say, all right, evaluate this. What do you think the problem is? And what should I do about it? 
And so that's kind of the idea behind how we engage with Gemini and how we combine the idea of anomaly detection, explainability, and causal reasoning with large language models. And you mentioned that you're using an agentic model. Is that correct? Like you have different agents for yeah, these different? Agent. So when we talk about agents in smart buildings, we're talking about reinforcement learning agents. So this, this type of an agent learns from uh, the building. It learns a policy from the building. It says, okay, this is the existing policy. Gets recorded information from the building with the current weather and the, and the actions that were taken by the existing building control bulb. And then from there, it tries to optimize on that. It interacts, it builds first a simulation or an emulation of the data, a data-driven emulation. And then from there, it interacts with that emulation to try to achieve a better policy. And so that's, uh, that's the other piece. So now what we're doing with that is we're reducing the amount of energy consumed and the amount of uh, carbon being emitted without actually changing the, the hardware infrastructure dramatically. So that's how we can achieve near-term large scalability with this kind of an approach. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to uh, change the software than it is to change the hardware for sure. So where do you see this technology going in the future? And where, where, what's your plan? Well, thanks for the question. I think, my personal opinion, and I've worked in AI for uh, a long time, I think the next major breakthrough is going to be an optimal control. You're going to see a lot more AI-based control in systems that uh, are have a lot of randomness in it. So not every decision is going to be the optimal, but over time, over many decisions, the system is going to be more optimal than more rules-based controls, deterministic systems, because they adapt to kind of the environment, like the outside air temperature, to the occupants. And it responds to that much more than, say, a rules-based approach. And I think what we're going to see in the near term is a lot more AI-based control systems that are kind of addressing these you know, long-term optimization problems whether related to energy or sustainability, we're going to see a lot more of that. I think that will be the next chapter in AI, to be honest with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, John. Congratulations on your award and uh, good luck.